Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the Crypto Lark. Today, we're going to be talking about Zilliqa. They are aiming to make a high throughput public blockchain. We're going to be breaking down the mechanics of that public blockchain after a quick shout out to everyone who's been hitting that like button. Of course, everyone who's been subscribing to the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit that button down below or the bell to stay up to date with all of the latest in the crypto space. Furthermore, this is, of course, not professional financial advice. This is just a dude talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet. Let's get into it. Now, Zilliqa is a very interesting project. They're bringing a lot of new ideas to blockchain. Now, they're really focusing on high throughput industries. I want you to think about the finance industry, maybe digital advertising. Those are all industries which have requirements that are not met by current blockchain solutions. Now, they are going to be creating a new smart contract language. They're calling it Skilla. It is going to be in direct competition to Ethereum's Solidity. Now, they're claiming that it's going to be less prone to bugs that, for example, the parity bug, which resulted in the loss of a lot of money for people over on Ethereum, can't happen using the Skilla programming language, smart contract language, that is. Now, this is not a Turing complete language, but it is a language that is specifically aimed at high throughput apps. It will be friendlier to verification as well. Now, they are aiming for very high scalability as the promise, high throughput. How do you achieve that? Now, they've set up a situation where the more nodes you have, the more transactions per second you will get. It's kind of the opposite of the current situation. It does have its upper limits, though. They think that once they get to a million nodes, should that situation happen, that it may no longer uh, be the case where it is increasing in scalability. They think there'll be a sweet spot actually below a million somewhere. Now, this is going to be operating on a proof of work algorithm actually on ETH hash. So the same algorithm that Ethereum uses. So when Ethereum does switch over to proof of stake, people have another interesting option in Zilliqa to mine if they want to. Now the proof of work algorithm is used to establish identities, but not to provide consensus, which is quite interesting. It'll be used to help prevent from Sybil attacks and be used for sharding, which we're going to be discussing in just a minute. Now, not every miner will mine every block. So this is kind of proof of work at slightly bigger intervals. Now, at the start, they're thinking that it may actually be CPU mineable. Theoretically, anyway, while well, the hash rate's quite low on the network. Maybe possible, I suppose, for the first few weeks, but I imagine that very quickly miners will kind of catch on. Ooh, Zilliqa's mineable, and we'll see a lot of GPU miners coming in. But definitely, if you have some GPUs sitting around and think, hmm, what can I mine? Watch out for that Zilliqa mainnet to drop, because that could be a good one to get in and mine early, without a doubt. 80% of the tokens are going to be mined within the first four years. There will only ever be a total of 21 billion Zilliqa in existence. So something to keep in mind. Now their consensus is by the Byzantine Fault Tolerant Protocol. Now this is less computationally intensive than other consensus mechanisms. A smaller consensus group is actually needed in order to meet that consensus. And it has finality. That being said that there are no confirmations required within this. Now, another big thing that they're really aiming for here is sharding. This is kind of their big value proposition that they're bringing forward. Now, what is sharding? I think that's probably a good spot to start off with. Essentially, you're splitting up groups of machines to process transactions. The idea of this is to try to prevent the bottlenecking that's been happening on the other blockchains. So let's just say, for example, you have 100 machines, you divide them up into 10 groups of 10, and they all work on a micro block that will then be brought into one final block later. So instead of everybody trying to work on the same block, which you would think would say, well, 
maybe that would be the better solution. Why don't we all work together to find the solution? Well, we are all working together. We all have our little pieces of work and then we put it all together instead of everybody being in the shop trying to work on the same thing at the same time. That kind of makes sense, I hope. Now, there'll be two minute block times, but the actual data can be confirmed on the micro block much, much quicker than that. And then it'll be written onto the block every two minutes. So this is the idea of the micro blocks as well. Write it on the micro block for quick to instant confirmation. And then you can write it on the main block two minutes later to actually register that transaction. So this, in a sense, is an on-chain scaling solution. It's not done on a side chain. It's not done off chain. And that is a very interesting difference. Now let's talk about that Zill token. Now it is, of course, going to be used to pay transaction fees on the chain. And of course, also to run those non-Turing complete smart contracts. Now, initially, the governance mechanism of Zillica is going to be centralized. That may change in the future, but essentially at the start, the team want to be in control of the project, to be able to be in control of those decisions. So that is something you can keep in mind. The team is a pretty competent team of people. Now, one thing perhaps to keep in mind though about the team, a bit small at the moment, but they are growing. They um, have said in their um, Reddit AMA, that they are working on hiring uh, about 20 developers. So they're definitely working on that moving forward, getting the team together, putting all those people in. But it is fairly small at the moment. And I think this is definitely one of those situations of a team that is working on delivering the tech before hyping it up too much. So that's perhaps something to think about. Now, having a look at their near-term roadmap, Testnet version one is quarter one, 2018. We're gonna see a smart contract alpha and beta coming quarter two and then quarter three. Mainnet launching in quarter three of this year. So you don't actually have to wait too long to see that mainnet drop. Quarter three is not that far away by any means. So definitely an interesting time to be looking at Zillica. Now they've been getting a few partnerships. Definitely wanna see them announcing some more partnerships. I imagine as we get closer to that mainnet drop, we will see that coming through without a doubt. For example, they partnered with Mindshares back in November, which is a global media agency. And very recently, they have partnered with Bluezell. They're gonna be using them for storage. Now, if you think about how do they compare with some of the other blockchains out there, well, for example, with Cardano, you might look at them and think, well, Cardano is a proof of stake versus Zillica's proof of work. They have a slightly different consensus algorithm as well. You might look at a high performance blockchain. A high performance blockchain, even though it's also a high throughput blockchain, promising huge amounts of transactions per second, they are looking at doing that via hardware accelerators. So Zillica is aiming to do the same thing, but going down a different road to get to the same destination. Now, you might think about NEO, of course, as well. NEO is looking at having 100,000 transactions per second on chain within the next few years. That is a mighty formidable solution, not to mention, of course, NEO's off-chain scaling solutions through the Trinity protocol Wow, a lot of potential there as well. And of course, our old buddy, Ethereum. Now, look, Ethereum is looking at a lot of different scaling solutions. It's looking at sharding as well, but it's also looking at side chains. It's looking at off-chain scaling solutions as well. Currently, Zillica's testnet is around 2,500 transactions per second. Ethereum, of course, is uh, around 10 to 15 most of the time. Obviously, we can always go back and forth on the transactions per second uh, arguments. Some are more, some are less. They're all developing. They're all moving forward at breakneck speed. That transaction per second will be going up for all of them. Ethereum is working probably harder than any of them trying to scale up because they are the big dog right now. 
and they realize how important it is for them to scale quickly. Now, some things you might want to think about, it is still pretty early days for Zillica. I mean, we do want to see them actually delivering on that tech. Now, they are, of course, as I mentioned, they're focusing on that tech delivery, not so much focusing on big hype right now. So the competition's out there. I personally see a future where we have lots of different blockchain projects out there. So definitely space for Zillica to be in here as well. The new language, though, could be a hindrance to adoption. Now, it wasn't a hindrance to adoption for Ethereum, but Ethereum did have that first mover advantage, so people kind of had to use Solidity. Whereas with Zillica, will people hop on and use Scylla? Or will they say, hey, we've already learned Solidity, we're just going to go develop on Ethereum. Or we're going to go develop on another platform that actually lets us use an existing coding language that we know or smart contract language that we know, of course. So that's perhaps something you might want to think about. And of course, adoption. Can Zillica actually capture some market share? Will people use them? I think the answer is yes to that. It's simply a matter of time for them to start nailing down those high level partnerships. So something to think about though. Now, Zillica currently is around seven cents US. Now it has, was going for less than a cent during the ICO. So it's up pretty decently without a doubt from the ICO price, $439 million market cap, not too shabby at all. We haven't seen any giant run up in Zillica yet. The most we've seen here is about uh, nearly nine cents just after the uh, market cap came online. So we haven't seen any giant run yet, but I think this is a project that does have a lot of potential moving forward to be a very high market cap coin. The liquidity is also very low right now for Zillica. I mean, yeah, it's trading $15.5 million per day at the moment, but it's really only being traded over on Huobi. Now look, Huobi is a big enough exchange without a doubt but that's just one exchange, oh, like gate.io too, but gate.io, well, yeah, it's small exchange comparatively. IDEX is doing it in relevant volume. When we actually see Zillica get listed on Binance or we see it get listed over on Bittrex, for example, well, then it's a different game. Then we've got some real liquidity going for it. I think we'll see some price action to follow either with more exchange listings or maybe a bit later in the year as we do see that main net approaching, but definitely a very high potential project here. But you'll let me know what you think about it in the comments section down below, guys. Long live blockchain, and peace out till next time.